Hello and welcome to Let's Play The Colonel's Bequest, also known as Laura Bow 1. This is probably a somewhat lesser known CR game, but if you've never heard of it, you may still be familiar with its sequel, Laura Bow 2 The Dagger of Amun Ra. This game was released in 1989 and was written by Roberta Williams, whom you of course know as the writer of the King's Quest series. This is, however, a very different game than King's Quest. In fact, there's nothing else quite like this in the Sierra Library. Instead of a traditional adventure, this game is more of an unfolding story, and rather than just solving puzzles, your job as a player is to observe as much as you can and uncover the whole story. The story itself is set in the 1920s and structured as a play divided into several acts, and is written as a traditional whodunit, in the style of Agatha Christie and the likes. Two things that have been absent from my uh, Let's Plays for a while are making a comeback here, my Roland MT32, and my voice acting talents, such as they are. Because there is no speech in this game. There is music, fortunately, and there's also copy protection. Using your magnifying glass in the back of the map and closed in your Colonel's Bequest box, please identify the following fingerprint. And... Indeed, you need to find these in the uh, on the back of the map that is included in the box. I think the game actually also came with uh, fingerprints, but I do not have an addition. Of, uh, came with a, a magnifying glass to do that. I do not have an addition that includes that, however, and I am trying to see which fingerprint this is. The game can sometimes be rather annoying in ha um, in having very similar looking fingerprints here and because of the low resolution it's sometimes hard to see which one it's actually supposed to be however I do believe that this one belongs to Dr. Wilbur C. Fields who here is just listed as Dr. Fields the curtain is about to go up Please be seated. Thank goodness I got that right, otherwise I would have had to re-record the introduction. Okay, let's begin. Have you previously attended a performance of the Colonel's Bequest? A.K.A. Do you want to see the intro, except you have to answer no in order to see it. Nineteen twenty five, Tulane University, New Orleans, Louisiana. It's not the first time we've seen Tulane University in a Sierra game. We've been there in uh, Gabriel Knight. Although technically that was released after this game. And actually, there's a reference there to uh, this game as well. If you go back and watch my Let's Play of that, you'll see that I mention it as well. Hey, 
Hey Laura, want to come with me this weekend to my Uncle Henri's estate? He's having a family reunion of some sort. You can keep me company. I don't know, I have studying to do. Oh, come on, it'll be a scream. It's such a creepy old place, you might find it interesting. Okay, count me in. That did not take a lot of convincing. I guess those studies were not that important after all. Two nights later... As much as I like Sierra, they were never very good at pacing their cutscenes, were they? <laughs> We're here, Laura. Oh, well, that isn't ominous at all. I'm sure nothing bad will happen during this game. Well, what do you think? It looks interesting, all right. Wait till you meet the family. Yes? Jeeves, don't you remember me? I'm Lillian. Oh, yes. Everyone else has already arrived. They're just sitting down for dinner. Please come in and join them. During dinner, I'm glad you are all here. I'm sure you are wondering why I sent for you. As you know, I am a very wealthy man. I've invested my money wisely and have put away almost every dime. However, my end is near, and I have decided to bequeath my millions to each of you sitting at the table. Except, of course, Lillian's friend, Laura. Ah, I wanted money. <coughs> anyway, as I have said, you're all inheriting my money, and you will inherit equally when I go. If any of you should die before I do, then your share will be distributed equally to the surviving parties. I'm tired, Fifi. Help me back to my room. Good night, all. Can you believe that? The old goat. I'm surprised he didn't try to take it with him. He's such an old skinflint. I don't think you deserve any money. Speak for yourself. How much do you think he's got? Well, I know what I'm going to do with my share. Your share? I bet the old codger outlives you. I wonder how sick he is. Do you think he's going to go soon? I've had enough of this. Laura and I will retire to our room now. Such a nice uh, group of people they are.
Act 1, and it's 7 p.m. Yes, you're going to hate that clock if you play this game. Because whenever you see it, it tends to mean you missed something. Of course, even if you didn't miss something, you will still see it. But especially the first time you play this game, you are going to miss a lot of things a lot of the time. It will, of course, be my goal not to miss anything and get to the full score at the end of the game. This is the guest room you share with Lillian. Though a bit tired looking, it seems comfortable enough. Laura, dear, please excuse me. I'm going to freshen up in the bathroom. Why don't you explore the estate a bit? Indeed, why don't we? Hmm, something doesn't feel right. Everybody's acting too strange, even Lillian. What would Daddy do in a situation like this? Or, more importantly, what would Picard do? Honey, if things don't feel right, they probably aren't. Observe the situation closely, yet be unobtrusive. Explore your surroundings quietly and carefully. Try to question the others without raising suspicion. Notice small details. Take lots of notes. And above all, be careful. Yes, all of those things incredibly important in this game, especially the take lots of notes part. Since you never go anywhere without your trusty notebook and pencil, you go to your suitcase, open it, and remove those two items. Yes, your father is right. Observing the situation and taking notes would be a good idea. Okay, I get it. You want me to take notes. Also, is is he like Obi-Wan Kenobi, able to astrally project himself or something? I don't know. Probably not. Alright, we're finally in the game. And able to move. There are, however, a few things that happen on a timer, especially in this beginning of the game, so I'm going to leave things paused as much as possible while I'm talking about things. You may also have noticed that I didn't actually attempt to make Laura sound like uh, the way she does in uh, uh, Lorbo 2, the Dagger of Amun Ra. And I didn't attempt to give anyone a Southern Occasion accent or anything like that, because I'm horrible at that. Doing it for the one video with the comic strip in Gabriel Knight 3 was bad enough. But uh, I'm not going to do it for an entire Let's Play. That would just be torturing myself. As funny as some of you might find that, um, I am not going to do that. And um, I basically only have one girl voice, which isn't very convincing to begin with. And since there are a few things I need to do in the beginning of the game that are... Um, kind of timed, I am I might walk through a few rooms without really exploring them at start, which I normally wouldn't do, but um, this game kind of forces it. Um, the about text for this game is kind of interesting, actually, so let's read that. The Colonel's Bequest is different than the so-called normal adventure game, as it was designed around a story and characters rather than a series of puzzles. You may feel that there is a lack of a quest, well, in a way, you're right. There isn't a quest as such. Your goal is to get to know the story and the characters, to understand what's going on, and to survive the long night. We feel that the Colonel's Bequest is a true interactive story, rather than a game, and every effort was put into giving you the sensation that you are part of the story. The Colonel's Bequest will give back what you put into it. If you don't put much effort into playing it, you may feel that there isn't much to the game, but you would be wrong. There is a lot to it. But you may have to dig a bit to find it, and to be very observant. The Colonel's Bequest will reward those who are determined, those who will notice subtleties, those who will ask questions, who will probe. Good luck. We truly hope you enjoy it. Okay, that is a bold claim. We'll see if the game lives up to that as we go along. Um, I am going to speed up the walking a bit. There we go. We don't actually have to type look in every room, because you automatically look when you enter the room, and we've already seen the text you see for this room uh, when the game started. We can, however, look at other things, and I'm going to do that and hope the game 
doesn't uh, progress too far on me so that I get stuck. There's a suitcase lying on each bed. You cannot look at the beds individually. You always look at both of them. Your suitcase lies on the bed to the left of the doorway, while Lillian lies on Lillian's lies on the bed to the right. I have a friend named Lillian, which makes this really weird. Um, and we already knew this was Laura's suitcase, because, well, that's where she got her notebook from. Can I open the suitcase? You see the clothes you packed for the weekend. Can we get the clothes? Clutches, yes, of course. The clothes you're wearing are fine. There's actually only a very limited number of items you actually need to get in this game, but whatever. You'd look seri silly carrying a suitcase around with you. And speaking of what we're carrying around with us, we can actually look at that in our inventory. And as with mo most SCI Zero games, you can look at them like this. You can also type look notebook, which will give you the same image. No description text, unfortunately. And um, even more unfortunately, you also cannot read the notebook. You open your notebook and skim through your many notes and observations. Laura does take notes, you just aren't allowed to read them until the end of the game, at which point it basically tells you what you've missed. And you also get hints telling you what you should be paying attention to more on your uh, next playthroughs, which is actually quite nice. Again, improves the re replayability of this game. It also means that there are uh, a couple of uh, times in this game when I will be going places without seemingly having a logical reason to go there, just because, you know, I know that um, something is going to happen there that I need to see. You would only really find that out by uh, walking around a lot, exploring a lot, and playing this game quite often. And I'm only going to play it once, and I want to get everything, of course, so sometimes I will do things that you may not realize why I'm doing them. Other, but I'm just doing them because I know I have to, because I've played this game before, as you might have guessed. You'll have to take your own notes, though, if you want to have notes during the game, and you will need them if you play this game yourself. I already have notes, though, so I don't uh, need to take any right now. Um, let's try to open Lillian's suitcase. Lillian's suitcase is locked. Okay. That's too bad. There's some uh, sofas here. Most of the sofas look very old, dusty, and uncomfortable. You don't feel like sitting around. Okay. Seems to be painting on the wall. Looks like it might belong to the colonel. It might be off the colonel. Of course it belongs to him. Um, in his better years. Above the fireplace, you notice a picture of Colonel Dijon in his younger, more vital days. On the opposite wall, you see a picture of a little girl. Funny, the girl's eyes have a strange, hollow look to them. We can't actually see that picture because it's on the south wall and, well, that we can't see that. It's the fourth wall. Um, which, if this is actually a play, means that's where the audience is. Okay, that does that part doesn't actually make that much sense. Um, but apparently there's something strange about that the eyes in that painting. The eyes of the little girl have a strange, hollow look to them. That doesn't really help us much. There's no way you can see that picture right away. There's some pictures on the wall here, but trying to do that does not work. There's no way you can get a description of those pictures. You will always look at the the big ones. Can look at the wall though. Beneath a set of three small pictures you notice a small door in the wall. So let's look at that door. Beneath a set of three small pictures, so that's the same description. Let's just try and open that door. It appears to be a shoot of some kind. You wonder where it goes. Two. I guess people who did the grammar for King's Quest VI um, for the dangling participle uh, wrote that sentence. Um, let's look in the chute. Cautiously, you poke your head into the dark opening of the little door and look around. All you can see is a narrow chute going down into complete darkness. Well, there's one way of finding out where that goes. But, um, let's create my traditional death save game before I do that. 
Enter, shoot. Ah! Oh, shoot. Ah, yes, traditional Sierra death sequences, complete with puns. There are quite a few of them. And quite a few of them are even more unfair than this one. It's kind of tradition for a Robert Williams game that it is possible to die on the very first screen, though. So that's kind of nice. I mean, Kings was one you could die by walking into the moat. At least here you have to type something to die. I guess that's an improvement. Which isn't true for all the death sequences in this uh, game, that's for sure. I will be showing um, off the ones I know about. There's quite a few I don't know about, I'm sure. Okay, so let's uh, just leave the shoot alone for now. And see what else we can do in this room in the next video.